Good morning, Mount Olive Church and friends of Mount Olive Church. Andrew Short here with you on this Saturday morning, literally on this Saturday morning. Uh, I'm usually film the day before, but it uh, that didn't happen. So here we are this morning. Hope you had a good week. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and present my screen now, let you see that. Um, I'm going to do a quick devotion this morning on Pastor's message there last Sunday. Great, great message, great service. Um, like, like some of the other guys have talked about, it was it's awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I certainly appreciate Pastor and and all the time he puts in throughout the week, studying and getting ready and letting the Lord, you know, use him throughout the week. I certainly, I'm like him. I certainly believe that, you know, the Lord can give you a message, you know, months and years and however long he wants to ahead and, and he can prepare you way ahead. But it, it, it's cool to see sometimes from my perspective, maybe not from the, from the preachers, but it's cool to see them get a message right then and there. Uh, and then how, how good it comes together. And I told, TJ, this week, I think my notes may have been better for this message than they are sometimes when he give us, gives us the bulleted list. But I uh, just want to quickly talk about the, the thought that kind of hit me. And, and he was the big point from Sunday was noised um, and making it known. And, then, of course, we're doing Mark 2, and we're talking about the friends that that brought, that carried the paralytic man and, and led him down through the roof. And it's, it's a great story. The pastor's been there before. I think I was involved once upon a time of, carrying uh, somebody in and you know letting them down the baptistry and uh, it's it's a great story of uh, and, and there's so much in that let's let's read first here let's get right to it mark 2 and, and verse 3 we'll talk about who he is um verse 3 says and they came they come unto him him jesus bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four carried of four so four friends carried their friend uh, they, were, they were certainly friends if they carried him that far right and when they could come not when they could not come nigh to him for the press, they covered the roof where he was. There's a lot I love that point of how they had to dig in, right? It's made of all this bad stuff and nasty stuff, and they had to dig in uncovering the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy laid. When Jesus, Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Of course, there's this great you know, um, discourse with Jesus and the, and the scribes and the Pharisees. I got to play a Pharisee on Sunday. Um, so there's this great discourse of how they kind of argue back and forth because they're they're thinking to themselves, who does this guy think he is? He can't forgive sins. Now, they would have had no problem if he had just straight up healed the man. They would have been like, whoa, okay, cool. Um, but the fact, the fact that he said, thy sins be forgiven, they really, really struck a chord with them. Um, but the one thing I want to focus on here, this is a great story, you know, the, the friends, the unity it took for them to carry the man to Jesus. There's a lot in that. There's a lot in them digging in, being willing to dig in. Um, you know, there was this big crowd at this place. Um, but but the point I want to make is it's not about any of that. It's not about the friends. You know, we're certainly thankful for friends that, that do things for us. You know, in this revival, I've seen these young people take their friends and, and, and lead them to the altar and pray over them. And that's so amazing. And, um, you know, I've seen them invite each other at school to come to this revival and just sit in my class and talk about, I've heard the name Jesus in my class and, and it's awesome. And, you know, they, they've been great, great friends to each other, but it's not so much about them and how, what good of friends they are. It's about who they are leading their friends to. Same, same with this story here. It, it's not about the friends. Bless their hearts. They were awesome. They they carried this dude how, who knows how far on the stretcher, but it's about where they were taking him. It's about who they were taking him to. It's about the fact in verse 5 that they took him to Jesus. The same with us. It's not about us taking our friends to this revival just for the sake of it being a revival. The, the thing that makes this revival so amazing is that Jesus is there. Right. It's about who he is. Just the same thing that makes every Sunday morning service amazing. Every Wednesday night service amazing is we are taking ourselves and our friends and our family to Jesus. Right. Who he is, is our savior. He is everything. It's all about him. Every devotion we do, every message that's preached, every song that's sung is about who he is. This is this is a lyric that hit me this week. I don't know that it particularly goes well with this, but it was just. I just liked it. Um, the paralytic man certainly was given grace. Uh, he had to. He, he couldn't carry himself. He had to rely on his friends. He had to rely on Jesus to heal him. Uh, but this is kind of a, a part of this song by Micah Tyler. 
says, I still hurt, fall short of what you say I'm worth. And that devil says, I don't deserve what you did on the cross. And he's right, because I don't, but you did it anyway. That's a grace, isn't it? I don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. None of us deserve what Jesus did on that cross. And the devil will come with at that or with that to us. And, and, and he's right. We don't deserve what Jesus did on the cross. But the, the thing that he leaves out that Jesus puts in is that he did it anyway. And he would do it again. He would do it just for us. So hopefully, guys, you got something out of that today um, on this Saturday morning. I hope that you have a great weekend this weekend. Hopefully get to see you tomorrow at church. Please join us 11 o'clock at Mount Olive. We love you guys. Have a great day and have a great rest of your weekend. See you.